All right, all right, praise the Lord. Coming back once again with this part two video. And I want to talk about church growth for a moment. Because the video I did the other day was talking about, I want to see the power of God. I want to see people move forward. I want to see the ones who need to be changed and changing and how we all are dealing with issues in life and we all need to be better than what we are. Problem is, we, want, we don't want to recognize that we got shortcomings. Well, whoever you are looking at this video, I guarantee you, it's something wrong with you. It's something wrong with me. And church growth is something that we see nowadays is a shortage in. But see, I'm going to go a little bit deep because I want to get past the building. Jesus said, and I want to say Matthew, that upon this rock I should build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. And some people think when Christ said that, that that means that, oh, that means Satan can't even touch the church. Satan can't get nowhere close. He can't come in the church. And we can see how that's mistaught as a scripture. Because Satan is all over the house of God. Paul confirmed that the church has its foundation. What do it have its foundation in? Jesus the Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of the church, not your pastor. See, that's the problem now. And then we got to move Christ out of the way. Now we got to answer to the pastor before we answer to Christ. And I'm not saying this to make nobody mad, but people are, are, are getting very ignorant of the scripture. Now we know who's we know who's placed as pastor. Now let's just keep it real. A pastor should know their position. But when a pastor starts trying to forget about what God says, and he think he's running it all and he don't have no God in him, something wrong. So having said that, now, it should be remembered that growth can be a, a relative term. And, and there are different kinds of growth. And some of these growths I'm talking about don't have nothing to do with numbers. That's what I want to talk about in this video. Because I hope some ministers are listening. Everybody got to have a big building now. Oh, we need to grow. We need to grow. But if you're not growing spiritually, uh-oh. If you are dead spiritually, we, we want to pack out a house now, but we're not even drawing people to the Lord. See, a, a, a church can be alive and, and growing well, even though the number of the members is not changing. What do you mean, JT? Well, if we can get the ones on the inside to straighten up. See, it's a whole lot of people been going to church for years, Sister Maria. They've been inside of the building, but have they been growing spiritually? If we can get those to start growing and stop being jealous and, and envy of each other. See, I'm talking about growing without even moving a number. Hmm. The attendance is still the same. And but but when we see people getting delivered, here we go again. People that's been in the church giving their life to God. Not because you've been in a choir stand for 15 years or a deacon for 20 years. You can be all of that. That's good. God bless you. But if you are not following Christ, hmm, you're in bad shape. If those in the church are growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus, giving themselves over to God and doing his will, that's what I'm talking about. That is a church that is experiencing true growth. And at the same time, a church can be adding to its roles weekly, having huge numbers, and still be spiritually messed up. We need growth in the spirit. If I'm going to my church, oh, let me talk about myself. If I was still like I used to be, if I'm going to church every Sunday, being on the organ as a minister of music every week, going to Bible study faithfully, going to Sunday school faithfully, but I'm still the same JT I used to be. I'm just wasting gas and messing up tires and wasting plenty of time because there is no change in me. I'm going to church, but as soon as I leave, I'm still the same. This is what's going on, people. 
And if you haven't felt a change and, and been delivered, something seriously wrong, this is the way people are representing Christ now, but not everybody. We, we sitting around and acting like we can keep doing the same thing and God is going to accept it. Spiritual growth. I hope somebody's listening right now. Growth of any kind follows a typical pattern. Preachers should be growing. Sunday school teachers should be teaching. Choir members should be coming to church on time. Choir members should not be fussing and fighting over who's going to lead the song, jealousy and envy. Musicians need to be in the word of God, Brother Marquise. Ain't that right? There has to be balance between planting and watering for a local church to grow. Which means that what are we teaching? Hmm. Now, I want to say that because I want you to focus past a building and think about the body of Christ for a moment. The body of Christ. How are we hurting it or how are we helping it? If the, if the planting and watering get out of balance, the church will not prosper as God wants it to be. And that's what's going on now. We are moving God out of the way, my brothers and sisters. See, it's time for some of the, I'm going to say this again. I, I know some of you preachers get mad when I say this, but we don't need a whole lot of more buildings up. We need to straighten up the ones that's already up. Around here in my neighborhood, we got seven, eight churches on one street. And I guarantee you, if Christ was to come break through the eastern sky, and come right now and walk on my street, next street over, I mean, he probably would have a problem with all seven of them. And I'm not being funny. Because we don't give. We don't love. We don't pray for one another. We don't do a whole lot of things that the word of God say do, but we want to call that the church. That's why I don't want no part of that. And to that brother that made that comment talking about you ain't no Christian, you're right, I'm not. I'm a true believer. I don't put myself in categories with most Christians because they don't love. They don't practice it. They don't obey God's word, but not all. I don't have a problem with people calling themselves Christians. I don't. That's me. If you want to call yourself whatever, knock yourself out. I just simply say one God, one faith, one baptism. I'm in the true body. I love Christians. I love everybody. But that's just something I do. You don't have to do what I do for your little foolish comment. Yes, I'm a child of God. I'm a true believer. Because most Christians are, are, are it's just like the title minister of music. Don't call me minister of music. Just call me Jerome. Brother JT. I'm not big on titles. I'm big on the spirit. I'm big on talking about God. Don't call me pastor. Don't call me bishop. Don't call me none of those names because I'm just a simple old servant. If you want to call me something, call me a servant because that's all I am. I'm serving. I don't want to be no higher than a servant. So I'm growing spiritually. I'm growing and I have grown and still growing and I got a lot of more growing to do. But I'm working on that. We all know what's wrong with us. But do we truly want to work on what's wrong with us? That's wrong with us. Excuse me. And to, in order to grow, you have to do something you've never done before. And I'm going to say this again. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Go to Ephesians 1, 18 through 23, I believe. He is the head. So, some of these women done forgot that because they're looking at the pastor like he's old oh, well, prayer. Some of these men, these preachers, they done, they done forgot that. Because let me say something before I close. Most pastors do not want to serve. They want to be served. I'm going to say that again. Most pastors don't want the title servant because they want to be higher than that. I'm a servant. That's why I say you don't have to call me none of those titles. I'm not no evangelist. I'm not no prophet. I'm not no pastor. I'm none of that. I'm a servant. And I'm going to try my best to serve as the best way I can, Sister Deborah. God bless you. 
Love you. May God bless you and your family. Keep on with that encouragement because we all need it. And with that being said, are you growing or are you sitting still? Are we helping the body of Christ or are we making folks scatter more and more from the body of Christ? One more thing I need to say that's very serious because Jesus told us about the 99. When one astray, he's not worried about the 99. They don't need repenting and all that. He said, you go after that one. Listen, preachers, real close. What if that one is the homosexual? What if that one is the prostitute? What if that one is the drunk man that you can't stand? What if that one is your brother you ain't spoke to in 15, 20 years? And remember, when we don't do what God say do, we are held very accountable. That's why I embrace the sinner, but not the sin. I was talking to a brother the other day, free from it, free from homosexuality. One brother free from selling drugs and being in the street life. One sister delivered from the streets of, of, of prostitution and, and doing all the drugs. Are we going after the laws or are we just sitting in the building? Peace and remain blessed.